Okay, good morning, everybody. As you all know, today is September 11th, a very, very dark day for the history of the United States. Um, of course, uh, that history affect, affected the whole world in a lot of sense and changed uh, the focus of a lot of our foreign policy and got us engaged in wars and all kinds of things. Um, and I just wanted to give an update. There's, listen, I, but before I get into this too deep, okay, there are so many conspiracy theories uh, that revolve around September 11th and the events that took place in New York City, of course, uh, and the Pentagon. And look, I'm going to tell you the truth, okay? I'm a, I like conspiracy theories. I, I mean, like a lot of them are actually have turned out to be true. Okay, but when it comes to the September 11th ones, I, I don't have an opinion on this, okay? And, and I'm going to tell you why. And this is my reason. First of all, uh, I know that a lot of people died on that day. And that's probably um, not, a good, not a good excuse. But I, I've had a hard time actually getting into all of the theories and everything because... Um, uh, I just I just knew of so many people that had died on September 11th and <clears throat> I don't know it, it was it it's just something that's kind of prevented me from that okay so that's one thing but another thing is there's so much okay there's so many different theories there's so many different ideas and it's um, you know I just haven't dedicated the time to it, okay? And I'm probably not going to. And this update will help you to understand why, okay? What I'm telling you is going to give you kind of the why about that. Now, there's a few things that we can consider. First is, I think a lot of people know that something very strange happened on that day, okay? At if we just embrace what was said okay everything that was put out in the news media right um we know at minimum it was a very very calculated and crafted work of terrorism okay the real question that's always loomed is um who the actual perpetrator was and again it goes on and on and on but there's something that we have to remember okay and i'm i'm telling you this because it's important okay it is so important we have to remember who is actually the puppet and who's the puppet master in all of these things okay and the reason I say that is because I think if you lose focus on that, what happens is you uh, begin to just simply, I don't know, you get caught up. You get caught up in, in the actions of this person and that person. Okay, so I'm going to John 10, and, and this, is, this is my answer, okay? Who is the puppet and who is the puppet master? This is what Jesus said in John 10, verse 10. He says, A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Okay, so a thief, right? A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, it is very clear. Now, one of the things that happened on September 11th was that a lot of people lost their lives. And I have no doubt that the devil himself was behind uh, the nefarious evil act that led up to that, all of those events. Whatever that planning was, whatever, you know, um, whatever truly happened, there was a, a lot of lost lives there was a lot of damaged lives there was a lot of families torn apart there were so many um 
people that were hurt in in that process not not just those that were killed but those that were hurt and you know it has the earmarks of how the enemy loves to destroy human life and to destroy peace or uh you know destroy what's normal now i I do see and, and if you remember because i remember these events vividly right even even though i reviewed like some of the um news articles and everything i remember vividly um the shock that everybody experienced that this was happening and shortly after that there was really a, a spiritual it, it was like a, a spiritual um i don't want to say it was an awakening but it it seemed like it okay people were they just defaulted back to the relationship with the lord and found comfort in that now it didn't last long there sure there were some long standing uh effects from that but i'm saying for the most part people became religious in in the moment for a short time and then they just went back to their ways which is actually uh really really scary i'm just going to say that okay from a spiritual perspective from somebody that watches the the spiritual lives of people that is probably uh, one of the scariest things that I see that people experience in their spiritual lives. They, they, they run to the Lord in a time of need and then they walk away from him. Okay. And in this passage, we have two people. We have the thief and we have the shepherd. Okay. And in this passage, those, there's two options there. And we have to remember this. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's the objective of the thief. When you're looking at conspirators, right? When you're looking at uh, political leaders, when you're looking at the events of the day, you, and when you see people, uh, you know, making decisions that will affect thousands of lives and all of that. And you wonder, okay, well, who's leading this? Who is the person that's uh, calling the shots here? Well, look, ultimately there's one great conspirator. That's the devil himself. It has to be said, okay, because that's the truth. Okay, look, the, the men of this world are only ever going to be so sophisticated. There are people that think that they're really pulling the strings, that they're really the puppet masters, that they're calling the shots. And what they don't realize is they're actually a puppet themselves. The enemy is using them. He's, he's made his way into their life. He's manipulated them. And he is actually killing them and stealing from them and destroying them this is a reality this is what's happening like all over right now so that is what the enemy does we saw that i think when you look at the horror of september 11th when you look at the horror of you know these wars that are going on and when you see the the loss of life and all of the the horrible things that are happening that is how the enemy wants us to live he wants our life to be a living hell on earth he wants us to be uh, just completely given to fear he wants us to be completely hateful resentful bitter cold-hearted um, utterly destructive completely self-centered and he, he has a plan, okay? He has a plan for that. He will do whatever he can to get you to sign on to that plan. Okay, so that's, that is the master of puppets, so to speak. Then you have 
the Lord, the shepherd. Okay. And he says this, he says, I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. You know, if you look at what the scripture says about life and the Lord, there are so many verses about that, how he gives life, not just physical life, not, not just the life that we're experiencing here on earth, but we're talking about spiritual life, everlasting life. He causes us and he made it possible for us to be born again. Mosquitoes get me here today. Um, and he says this in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Okay. This shows you the radical difference between the thief and the shepherd. The thief comes and he takes life. The shepherd comes and he lays down his life. It shows you how completely opposite they are. And it's important that we pay attention to this reality because honestly, so much of what's happening in our world, although it may not seem like it and we might forget it, so much of what is happening, actually, I would say everything that's happening in this world, all of these, uh, all of the crazy ideas that are being floated in the political realm right now, all of the, the different things that uh, our country is embracing and the world is pursuing, okay, this, it all comes down to this, actually. It all comes down to who you're following. And I don't think many people actually get it. There's a ton of people that think this is not that important of an issue. Okay. There's a ton of people that think, hey, you know, like if you talk to them about the Lord, they're like, hey. That's between me and the Lord, okay? So leave me alone, right? Huh? Forget about it, right? You get that. You get the resentment. You get the, the people that push you off. Well, look, it's important. It's important on so many levels, and here's the first. Like we saw on September 11th, you never know the day when your life is going to end. Life is so fragile. Listen, I don't even know how to uh, say this, and, and I'm not going to uh, go into the details, but like even this last weekend, every, and this may sound crazy, but every, both of the days of this last weekend, um, I had to deal with the topic of death, right? It's been such a tough thing, and honestly, it, it's, for me, I, I don't know. God has wired me in a very unusual way. And I don't know what, I, I don't even know if I'm helpful in these situations. But when I'm with people and they're dealing with it and they're facing, um, they're facing death and, and they're trying to process it and grieving and all of that, man, it is so heartbreaking. It's so, uh, it, it's so obviously contrary to the plan of God, right? And this all comes back to a man, a woman, buying into a lie that was told to them by the devil. This has been happening as long as human beings have existed. And that's why I say this is what it comes down to. Now, when we are looking at the events of 9-11... I think there, no doubt, were so many nefarious things that happened there. But understand who our real enemy is. Because look, the enemy, he is so crafty and so cunning. He would rather us be fighting against ourselves, be warring, or struggling, or wrestling in pointless things when we have actually been equipped to battle him directly, right? The scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty for the pulling down of the strongholds of the enemy, 
right? We can get caught up in these battles of what's happening in our world and forget that that battle first. And honestly, the reason we're always talking so much about all of these things that are happening is because we have to fight. The first theater of conflict that we engage in is in prayer, right? And it's in, actually, I would, let me back up. The first theater of conflict, honestly, our spiritual battle begins with us following the Lord into battle, okay? It begins with us walking with the Lord. You can't walk into battle alone. You can't go there without him because you'll lose. Okay, but you follow the Lord into battle and you use the weapons you're given. You use prayer. You use the word of God. Honestly, you use fellowship. People don't understand this right? They don't get it. You use your times of worship. You use your life. You use the body that God gives you, the mind that God gives you, all of these things you use to engage in this fight. And the fight is literally the fight against the work of the devil in this world. So I want to encourage you guys today, okay? I know I'm using September 11th uh, to bring you to the scripture, and that's exactly what we should do, right? I'm using this to illustrate the reality that, yes, there are powerful forces at play in the world around us. Yes, there is so much going on. But at the same time, through our relationship with the Lord, through our daily walk with him, through our uh, ability to speak out against what's happening, we are able to confront even the strongest of adversaries and actually find victory there because of the work of God in our lives and because of his work in us and through us. So um, I hope that encourages you today. I know this is a little bit longer than normal, but uh, if you stuck around, thank you so much. Please take a minute. If you're thinking on these things and you're processing today and this minister to you, take a minute to uh, send me a comment. I appreciate that. Also, like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you.